Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, welcome back to another episode. You join me on the way to work again, and today I'm going to be speaking to paramedics on the front line to find out what it's like to be uh, a paramedic in the London Ambulance Service, what it's like during these times, and also taking a look inside uh, a fully kitted out ambulance to see what kind of gear they have, because these things are serious machines. A fully kitted out ambulance costs between two and three hundred thousand pounds, and that's because of the gear that's inside them. They're absolutely kitted out to the max. They've got everything you need to deal with most emergencies, uh, and therefore they're very expensive. Medical gear is expensive. So we're going to take a look inside an ambulance, speak to some of the paramedics uh, on shift today, and find out a little bit about what it's like to be a paramedic. I'm really excited for this. I hope you can enjoy this video. I think it's going to be a good one. Let's go. So guys, you join me again outside of uh, Red Risa. So this is where we see patients with suspected coronavirus. And again, outside here is the ambulance bay. Now I wanted to show you something. So if you come over to here, we have a portable uh, ultrasound machine. So we use this machine to help us with triaging patients uh, with suspected coronavirus. So when we go out to the ambulance, we make a decision whether there's a, a high, a medium or low a clinical suspicion of coronavirus, of COVID-19. Uh, and then we use the ultrasound, either a portable one attached to the phone or this machine here, to scan the lungs of the patient and look for signs of coronavirus. So we actually use uh, one of the probes here to do that. So we place that on the pe uh, chest of the patient. Obviously we clean this before and after use. Um, on the chest of the patient, scan it in different zones and look again for signs of uh, the coronavirus. And the machine actually opens up like this. So uh, from the front, uh, and you get a picture here, when it's on the patient's chest, you'll get a picture. And we look for certain key features, uh, particularly B lines on the scan, which uh, give us this kind of indication that it could be coronavirus. Uh, the B lines classically look like torch lights, and that's really, really helpful in, in giving us an insight. So I just wanted to explain that to you, because I know I've been talking about it on my socials. I wanted to give you a little uh, insight into what that actually is and what the ultrasound machine even looks like. Um, we actually have the portable ones also, which I'd like to show you at some point uh, so that you can see. But yeah, so the patient will either be scanned in the ambulance or scanned here. And then if they're really, really unwell and they've got suspected coronavirus, they'll go into the red recess. Uh, and if they are uh, not as unwell, there is a green uh, area through there that we see patients uh, for other reasons, maybe like heart attacks, things like that. We also have our PPE room just through these doors here, which we can change, get ready and prepare to see patients. So I thought I'd take you outside the Eurisis department for a moment and just show you the ambulance bay. So behind us we've got an ambulance there, we've got another ambulance over here. So the ambulances come obviously through the entrance here, they park up anywhere here in these bays and we either go out to the ambulances through those doors and examine the patient, and have a handover from the ambulance and a triage, uh, or the patient is brought in if they're very unwell straight into the hospital there into the recess uh, where we either scan them just outside or take them straight through. So I thought I'd just show you out here what goes on. Um, once the paramedics have, have kind of taken their patient and brought their patient to the hospital, they then have to have this deep clean process. This is what they're doing now. They're cleaning the ambulance, they're preparing it um, to go out and collect other patients, to see other patients out in the community. So it's an incredible job that paramedics do. You know, it's, it's not just about picking up the patients and bringing them in, it's everything else that comes with it. And they put themselves at risk day in, day out for everyone else uh, in the community. So I'm just gonna take you over to one of the ambulances and show you what it's uh, like in these, because they're pretty kitted out, uh, pretty impressive machines. Um, so I've got John here, who's a, a paramedic, who's very kindly Hi, letting me have a quick look into the ambulance before you go out to see your next uh, uh, patient. You haven't got a call at the moment. Not the moment, Not no, the moment. We, uh, but we're that, just waiting for something to come in. But that can change very quickly, can't it? Yeah. How do you actually find it, these kind of, so you've obviously brought a patient here now as unwell. How do you find these kind of few moments afterwards? You kind of unwind a little bit or? Yeah, you sort of take time to reflect on what you've just done. Yeah. And um, prepare yourself for the next one, you never know what it is. Yeah, you never know what's going to kind of come through the door and things. But can I jump in here? Yeah, by all means. So I'm going to spin the camera around like this without dropping my uh, iPhone. So yeah, you've got your. I love these steps because basically when you come up to these, you open the door and it actually automatically opens these steps. Yeah. I'm just yeah, man. I like good. these things. And then you've got your. Um, so we actually come in here when you're triaging uh, our patients as well. So you've got your your bed here, which you'll bring the patient on, right? Yeah, that's it. And then you, you'll set up on a stand usually. Yeah, right, we'll set it? up on that end. We've got monitoring equipment at this end as well. So yeah, you've got all the monitoring kit here. You've got your airway bits, O2 masks here. What do you keep in here? Yeah, so this is basically all our kits, like maternity kit, dressing pack, burns kit. Most important at the moment seems to be infection kit. Yeah, well, yeah, you need that a lot at the yeah. moment. And then yeah. what's over here? What are these kind of bits and pieces? So here? this area is uh, clinical waste. Uh, again, we've got wipes here. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, spares, spares, yeah, pieces, and then kind of uh, uh, vomit bowls, which vomit is important. Bowls. So we're not having, hope, not using that too much at the moment. Hopefully not, not at the moment. Not related, but uh, other reasons very for vomiting, true. obviously. Very Got your true. gloves, and and this importantly here as well, which is your cardiac monitor, uh, and obviously if you need to give a shot, then you can yeah, kind of do yeah, it through that. Exactly. So don't like to do that too often. And then this is a bag you take out on site. Is that yeah. Right? So this is a first response bag, primary response bag. You see. It's quite a size. That is a big bag, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. How do you, you put it on your back? Do you, you can, yeah, it fits on your back, but most of the time there, and then we've still got hands free for this, which we take in. As you carry in to yeah. see the patient themselves. Yeah, yeah. I've just been obviously explaining to you guys that um, when I come in to um, see a patient, because we obviously as doctors now are coming into the ambulances to triage and do an ultrasound scan with our portable scan right. to see patients. So sometimes we have the patient sat here or on the bed and we do a quick scan to make the decision between what you guys have found out and what you you feel that you know the problem yeah, is and yeah. what we find in the scan and then we make a decision where it's best for the patient to go really isn't yeah, it? Yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, well that's yeah. one of the things that's actually been really nice that we've worked really closely with the paramedic teams actually over the last few uh, you, you know, weeks and months. Obviously, we do anyway, but even more so than ever, which has actually been really yeah, nice. It I has think. been nice. It has been nice. It's been, uh, it's yeah. been, it's been really good, and it's, I've actually enjoyed coming into this environment, learning a bit about what you've got in this space as well. Because even though there's a lot of kits, you are in a confined space, which yeah. I'd imagine can be a challenge sometimes. It can be a challenge. After a while, you get used to it, but the space soon fills up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how how do you find like in yourself with everything that you've seen over the last? few weeks and months how you know how has it affected you have you been okay with your mental health and stuff like that um, yeah it helps to talk amongst your colleagues and yeah. obviously uh, your family are a big help as well yeah um, but it's it's obviously good to offload and not bottle things mm. up you must have seen some difficult things I'd imagine yeah yeah and you take each shift as it comes as, as you guys do I uh, one thing I'd like to ask you because I think it's something we're seeing here in the hospital I feel that some people that should be coming to a hospital are staying at home because they're afraid of coronavirus. Are you seeing people, do you think, in the community and going, actually, you've had symptoms like chest pain for a few days, you know, why haven't you maybe told us about this? Yeah, very much so. And it's basically because they're frightened of yeah. coming in. But one thing I would say is obviously still call cool. 999 mm. if you're concerned. We'll always mm. assess you. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, we're, like I've been saying, we're, we're splitting the hospital into the green zone and the red zone. So the at risk of coronavirus versus not at risk. So. We really want people, if you are unwell, if you're having symptoms, then call the ambulance because you guys will come, you know, there's some nonsense rumours that you weren't going out to cause and all this. This isn't true at all. No, the no. ambulance service do an amazing job. They'll continue to come and support you and they'll bring you to hospital if you're unwell. We want people to come in. If you're having symptoms, you're having chest pain, other problems, the need assessment by a doctor, please come to the hospital. It's so, so important. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much definitely. for showing me around uh, the ambulance. It's been great to have a look and give people an insight really, you know, yeah, into what, yeah. what goes on. No problem at all, Thanks for your hard yeah, work. Cheers. Right, I'm just going to um, disturb uh, April and Natalie who are here. Oh, that's lovely sunglasses we've got on. Oh, Perfect yes. for a sunny day like this. <laughs> uh, they're just actually, you, you delivered a patient to the hospital, I understand, right? Yep. Or brought a patient in, which is probably a better way of saying it. And now you've got to do this kind of deep clean process, haven't you? Yeah, we have to after every patient. We do it normally anyway, but yeah. obviously. It takes, how long does it take for you to kind of clean? Boots. How long does it take you to clean you know, an ambulance like this? Five minutes. Five minutes, a quick job then actually. Yeah, There's me saying it takes them ages and it takes them five. We leave the doors open, spray all the stuff and then use Clonels as well. Clonels to wipe it all down yeah. to make sure it's kind of clean. And, and but we have got other people doing it at the moment, in the are doing it at other hospitals. So oh, okay. And you've got everything you kind of need in these kind of top boxes. You've got auction in that corner there, Entenops, yeah. first aid bags. Because this isn't quite the same. You've got the, obviously the other ambulances which are over there, which are a little bit more kind of So we're different. We go up. to the non-emergency um, yeah. jobs. So we go to Pack 3 and 4, slow graded yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, so we're doing it for the paramedics. Yeah, yeah, but you're, we're still doing, you're doing a, job. An, an incredible job. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, thank you for letting me show inside no here. Thank you. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing to have a chat with John back there. I'm really, really grateful for him giving um, some of his time to explain what they really see, what they go through, and also give you guys an insight into what uh, an ambulance is actually like. Uh, as I say, they do an amazing job, and at the best of times, you know, they're working all hours of the day uh, in normal, normal times and business as usual times. You know, they're dealing with uh, patients who maybe have had far too much to drink. Um, they have patients uh, that have mental health problems. They've got people with physical health problems. It's such a varied job. It's an amazing job, a very, very rewarding one as well. They see some incredible, uh, and meet incredible people and do incredible things. So yeah, it's just great to have an insight because often I think we forget, uh, you know, we talk about the hospital in terms of, uh, the, um, you know, the, the A&E department, the doctors and nurses, but those guys, those paramedics, 
they do an amazing job. So it's the end of my shift now and time to go home, but it was great to take some time to speak to the paramedics. They do an incredible job, very difficult job actually. Um, if you think they can go out and see anything in the community, it can be from a cardiac arrest to you know a cut finger to someone giving birth. It is such a varied job, an amazing job, but very difficult one too, especially in the current times and situations. What they're also dealing with at the moment is seeing patients who don't want to come to the hospital, who actually are unwell and need to come in, but are very reluctant uh, to do so. So it is a challenging time for them. But as you can see, amazing job, amazing ambulance as well. The kit that they have uh, is really, really special. Very lucky in this country to have ambulances that are properly um, kitted out with everything they need uh, to provide you know, a good level of care in a pre-hospital before they come in to see us. I hope the video was useful and an insight into what they get up to. Um, I think they're fantastic and do a great job. So a shout out to any paramedics out there who are watching this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Comment below as always. Please do subscribe if you enjoy the video. And also let me know what you'd like to see more of. I'm spending more time in A&E. We're not talking about just uh, coronavirus. There's a lot more things I want to talk to you about as well. But let me know below specific topics or areas of interest uh, for you guys watching. Take care and have a good day. Goodbye.